Good morning everybody. Now in today's video I've taken you to a very special place called Saint Suzanne. It's a medieval town and it's in the Pays de Loire region. Now I've turned up nice and early before the crowds get here. And there's a chateau here, there's church, there's restaurants, there's all sorts here. So walk this way and come along with me. Now the exterior walls of the fortified chateau date back to the 11th century with later additions up to the 13th century. And they have the very typical stylized chateau shaped building in the distance. There's another beautiful building here. I can't get in there at the moment, but I've always spotted the date stone above the, the entrance and it's 1685. Hopefully once the gates open, we can go in there and have a look around. But first things first, I think I need to find a boulangerie, get myself a croissant and a cafe to have a cup of coffee and then we'll have a leisurely stroll around see what this beautiful town has to offer I always love the way that these medieval little towns are laid out from a central square with lots of little alleyways pathways and roads leading off so this looks a nice Nice restaurant, cafe, shut at the moment. Okay, right, which way now? Let's have a look, see what's through here. Ah, yeah. Now, I've been here before, maybe last year. I think I've done a, a short little video here, if I remember rightly. There's a nice little courtyard of a well in the centre. Well, let's go and have a look. Ah, yeah, there it is. That beautiful place. Wow, that's a stunning little structure and a stunning little courtyard. Very quiet for the public turn up. Gives me an ideal opportunity to talk nice and clearly so you can hear me. They don't make them like that anymore, it has to be said. And as with most fortified medieval towns, always on a on a high point on a hill, on a mound. The advantage of that, you can see people coming. Always harder to invade when you're going uphill. Wow, you get a fabulous view. There's better vantage points, but we'll, uh, we'll have a look at those a bit later. Now, if I remember rightly, there's a few little bric-a-brac antique shops down here on the left. Obviously not open yet, but they might be later. Okay, oh, that's interesting. I often see them marked up with a price. It's like a tourist shop. Ah, a few antiques. Maybe have a look in there once it's open. A poignant moment to just stop and reflect of all those that died and give their lives for our freedom. And this is probably the point at which this Brave young lad, lost his life. Hard to imagine it in a beautiful place like this, but there was a lot of fighting in this area. So beautiful and calm and tranquil today. Right, which way now? It's a labyrinth of alleyways and roads. It's quite exciting on foot. Not very good in a car though. Now a lot of the, the later additions were built into the ramparts and the old exterior walls of the chateau. And this is a lovely promenade at the base of the newer 13th century chateau, which is just up there now. Always beautiful grounds in these lovely medieval little towns. Very, very well looked after and much loved areas. I think they're all running to the bakers. <laughs> Someone's just told them there's only three croissants left. Someone's going to be disappointed. Wow, look at that. That's why you subscribe to my channel. I'll take you to all the best places. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed or hit the notification bell, now is the time to do so. Wow. That's lovely. I wonder if that's open to the public. There's some vantage point. 
sounds like there's a little stream down below as you as you would expect with all medieval chateaus and fortified buildings they've always got a water supply couldn't just turn the tap on then could they well Uh, I've just spotted the Jardin Medieval, which is obviously a medieval garden. Apologies for my French accent, rather English accent. Still, you don't watch this channel to learn French, do you? Let's go and have a look. Right, where's this taking us? Okay, we're in the medieval garden. Looks like my garden. <laughs> Bit overgrown. Uh, judging by the the grass and that, I think the last time it was probably cut was in the medieval times but you do get some some sense of the exterior of the chateau the walls and the buildings around which is good nice little archway, rose archway let's have a look, there's a bit more information here okay Oh, we've got some squashes and calendula planted uh, condiments all oh, right yeah this is all the all the stuff they'd grow in the medieval times basil sage yeah angelica medicinal okay yeah wild plants hmm looks like a cardoon not quite sure about that one but it's medicinal so this is what they would have grown to dry out condiments aromatics yeah marjoram so yeah this is how they would have been laid out in the medieval times in little raised beds like this of course we've got the rose arch it's probably past its its best at the moment but it gives you some idea I thought all those medieval people would have been walking through and of course the aromas when the when all the roses were all right would be beautiful uh, some more beds here okay what we got yeah mints let's have a smell of that one oh yeah that's nice lavenders so yeah of course they'd needed medicinal things stuff for aromas so yeah pretty much they would have had it all here Another little area here. Yeah, nice and wild. This is probably for the wildlife. Right, that's the garden tour out of the way. Let's get back up into that lovely medieval town. Still haven't got me breakfast. There was a big queue outside the bakery. Now today I didn't actually intend to come to this this uh, beautiful place. I actually went to a vid grenier but it wasn't on so I knew this was close by I thought let's revisit Saint Suzanne last time I was here it was quite busy hard to recall but now I've gone off the beaten track a little bit a bit more rustic and you get a better view really Give me <laughs> time to get me breath back in quite a few hills but it's worth it I'm just on the exterior of the chateau now just walking around the outside now this beautiful place is probably about an hour away from me so not too bad really I'm hoping the chateau is going to be open today open to the public it's about quarter to ten now Hoping it's going to open at 10. If I can get in there before all the public get in there, it'd be a lot easier to film. When I come last time, there was an event on in there, and uh, it was ticket only, and I didn't have a ticket that sold out. So hopefully, it'll be better this time. There's always plenty to see. You've got to look up as well as down. And there's the coat of arms for Saint Suzanne. Three thousand years of history. Wow. Let's find the chateau, see what time that opens up to the public. I believe this is the entrance. Ah, the doors are open, that's encouraging. In we go. I'm not 
sure whether I have to go and pay, so I dare say someone will shout out to me in a moment if I have. It'll keep me in the dungeon. Well, wow. there would have been a fireplace just here, and you can see like a, the remains of a coat of arms there. The walls are about 10 foot thick, about three meters, so very fortified. Right, I'll go up there in a minute. Just make sure I've got to pay first. So I'm now on the reverse side of that beautiful 13th century chateau. A very grand entrance to it, with a modern attachment on the end. Imagine that's an exhibition centre. Let's have a look. Yeah, for architecture, preservation. Okay, it's shut at the moment. So this is the beautiful view they get from their chateau. Oh, there's a little bit of information here. Oh, they've had their own bakery inside. Oh, it's a multimedia centre now, that new building. Keeping up with the times. Uh, first building was the Iron Gate building. So yeah, basically just a, a fortified chateau. Oh, you've got to be fit in this game, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, but it's worth it, look at that. Now I think this building here would have housed you know, a few soldiers in there, like a little mini garrison in there. There's a fireplace in there. and A few things that they'd need to keep warm. So dotted around the perimeter are these little buildings. Now it does amaze me sometimes that some of the hazards at these places there's lots of countries that wouldn't allow you access but here I think they allow you to use your common sense which is good that's the visitor centre no one there at the moment now I'd imagine that this is a bread oven slightly different construction to the ones in my area but all the same the shape is the same and you've got the chimney going out there. Very important to have your own bread. Still to this day, the French love their bread. Let's go up those stairs and have a look, see what we can see up there. Now this building, the donjon, was actually the residence of Baron de Saint-Suzanne. So it would have had several floors in it. And I believe the uppermost floor was what they called the strong room. Soldiers would have patrolled the perimeter, keep them safe. All their goodies are up there, all their chests of gold and all their precious belongings. Now the holes that you see around the perimeter of the wall on the inside is where the floor joists would have sat. Originally there would have been a wooden staircase into there and that was the entrance way into the first floor. Now I'm not going to do a bungee jump. Imagine how cold these places were. Ooh. Right, another little defensive point. Oh, that goes off into somewhere. Mm. Probably a toilet. Ah, I found a toilet. There we go. All the mod cons back in the day. A nice little place here for your toilet rolls. <laughs> Boy, that would have been cold. Okay, up another level. Just imagine how fabulous this would have looked with a huge, massive wooden vaulted ceiling for the for the roof. It would have been quite spectacular. Down we go. So let's leave the safety of the chateau and enter the bustling streets. Oh, there's no one here. <laughs> An old school. Oh, doesn't this look lovely? I think it's a cafe. 
Oh, it's a library. Maybe a library with a cafe. Look at the lovely woodwork in here. Beautiful. Ooh, they sell cakes. A little bit early for that, but I'll squeeze a quads on in if they do any. <laughs> Sweet. Condiment trolley. <laughs> ah, that's not a bad view, is it? Time for tea. Now, as much as I love coffee, there's nothing like a refreshing cup of tea when you need a drink. So if you like coming on these little adventures with me, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the reminder, the notification bell, so you don't miss any future videos. I'm fully refreshed. Let's go and do some more exploring. How lovely, lots of old books. Ooh. Sam would like that one. She's got a pot like that. Cinema posters. Lots of teas. Products of the Mayan region. Lots of lovely books. Oh, I like that one. The Cuisines. Hmm. Ten pound or ten euros. Oh, look. Now that's an interesting book. Oh look, butter making, been doing that recently. Oh, I like this. Let's hope she takes card. Never know what you're going to find, do you? 1971, Chateau something or other. I wonder if that's worth anything. Chateaus. Yeah, I think Jasmine and Jack would like it here as well. Very quirky. Okay, let's have a stroll around. Beautiful day here. Set to be 30 degrees. Got another heat wave coming. Let's see what the house prices are around this area. A little townhouse, less than 30,000 euros. Fishing lakes, yeah, got all sorts around here. Oh, that looks an interesting shop. Let's have a look at that. Smells delightful. Must be a soap shop. Bonjour. Beautiful. Mm. Smells lovely. Oh look. Now at a guess, I'd say that these soaps are made with donkey milk. Hence the shape of the donkey. Lots of lovely cafes dotted all around the area. You're never very far from a drink. Tandoori chicken. Wow. Don't often see curry here. Check that out next time I'm here. Right, if these are shut, I may be on my way home. Yep, looks like they're still shut. Right, let's find the car. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.